Today, we're looking at the top 10 best cheeses ever. Whether it's part of a charcuterie board, in between two slices of bread, or straight out of the package, these are the standouts. Everybody knows the moon's made of cheese. Monterey Jack. 16 pounds of Monterey Jack. Spice plus cheese was truly a match made in heaven, and we can taste it in every single bite of Monterey Jack cheese. But how did this classic American cheese come to be? Back in 1770, Spanish Franciscan father Junipero Serra founded the Second California Catholic Mission at Monterey Bay. The missionaries brought both religion and food to the region, including cattle. Moo. This provided meat, milk, and white cheese the missionaries called queso blanco. After the Mexican-American War, California was sold to America, and Americans flooded into California looking for fortune. This meant that many Mexicans lost their beloved farms to people like the slimy David Jack. He settled in Monterey, where he befriended De Los R. Ashley, a lawyer who was hired by the town to legitimize their land claims. Ashley won the case, but he demanded nearly a thousand dollars in attorney fees, which the city couldn't pay. In order to amass the money to pay the fees, the town ended up auctioning off the land it was trying to protect. The only two people at the auction? Jack and Ashley. The land had cattle ranches on it, which were producing queso blanco. Jack realized its marketability and began selling it throughout Monterey with his name slapped on it, Jack's Cheese, which became Monterey Jack's Cheese. So the next time you have this cheese, think of the people who invented it and the man who stole it from them. It's me, Swiper. Parmesan cheese. Gene Parmesan. Parmesan cheese's history is as rich as it is stinky. It goes all the way back to the Middle Ages, with its very first record being from 1254. Rumors say that Benedictine monks living in Emilia Romagna, Italy, wanted to find a way to extend the shelf life of the milk they were producing. They eventually discovered how to create Parmesan cheese, also known as Parmigiano Reggiano. Over the course of the next few centuries, these monks had a monopoly on Parmesan cheese and export exported it to different regions of Italy. As its popularity grew, it spread all over Europe. Of course, this popularity meant that people started trying to make it themselves, and a bunch of copycats sprung up to capitalize on this unique cheese. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> to combat these imitators, Italy issued a decree that placed exclusive control over the production and sale of this cheese in the hands of the Consorzio. In 1955, the official name of authentic Parmesan cheese became Parmigiano Reggiano. Eventually, the European Union would get involved to protect authentic Parmesan cheese and decided that Parmigiano Reggiano should be a protected designation of origin. An EU court ruled that only cheese produced in the provinces of Parma, Emilia Romagna, as well as very limited areas in surrounding regions were legally allowed to be called Parmesan. But while that decree rules over Europe, it doesn't rule over America. In America, anyone can call their cheese Parmesan, which means that the majority of the Parmesan Americans are consuming isn't actually Parmesan. If you want the real thing, buy some Parmigiano Reggiano. You'll understand all the hype immediately. Okay, it's Parmesan. Mozzarella cheese. Mozzarella, of course. Mozzarella comes from the Italian verb mozzare, which means to cut, and refers to the way the curd is hand stretched in strips and then cut into balls. Originally, mozzarella was only made with buffalo milk, but nowadays it's made using cow's milk. The term mozzarella first appeared in Italy in 1570 in a cookbook by Bartolomeo Scappi, chef to the papal court. Mozzarella is known as a stretched curd cheese because of the way the cheese mass is kneaded and stretched like bread dough. Mozzarella is a fresh, mild cheese with a shiny, damp appearance. Yum, yum, good. Yum, yum, good. Mozzarella usually comes in the shape of a ball, but is also available as pearls. The largest ones, shaped like a braid or a knot, can weigh up to seven pounds. Mozzarella is a very digestible cheese with low fat, lactose, and cholesterol count. It is high in proteins, calcium, phosphorus, and water-soluble vitamins. It's also a good source of zinc and vitamin E, which help fight tissue aging. Unlike many other kinds of cheese, it has a low salt content, which means it's good for people prone to high blood pressure. So not only is it tasty, but it's also good for you. What more could you ask for? You should try the latte mozzarella pizza roll. 
Gruyere cheese. Mmm. Mmm. Is that Gruyere? Gruyere cheese is known for its rich and nutty flavor, and there's no doubt that this cheese is to die for, literally. Did you know that people have gone to war over this cheese? The thing about Gruyere cheese is that it's hard to place its point of origin. It was developed in the mountainous town of Gruyere, Switzerland, which makes it geographically a Swiss cheese. But the town is extremely close to the Franco-Swiss border, which means that France is making many similar kinds of cheese, such as Comte, which technically falls under the umbrella term of Gruyere. On top of that, there's another variety of Gruyere cheese that's from the Austrian side of the Alps. Oh, because it's so hard to pinpoint where this cheese came from, and because it's so good, everyone wanted to claim it as their own. This led to cheesemakers in France and Switzerland going to battle for three years over which country makes the best Gruyere cheese. Both countries wanted to have exclusive rights to the protected designation of origin for Gruyere. To add gas to the fire, both cheeses had distinctly different tastes and appearances. The French believed they deserved the distinction since their cheese was more widely recognized. The Swiss argued that the cheese was named after a region on their side of the border, and they had been making the cheese longer. Eventually, the debate got so heated that the European Union EU, had to step in to mediate. The EU decided in favor of the Swiss since the cheese originally came from Switzerland. Switzerland. We could live in Gruyere. Pecorino cheese. Santo pecorino. Pecorino technically denotes all Italian cheeses originally made from sheep's milk. These are firm and creamy cheeses shaped like a drum. Younger pecorino cheeses are smoother and softer in texture and possess more mellow, buttery flavors. Butter! Aged types are crumblier and feature a somewhat nutty or earthy taste. But where did this delectable cheese come from? Well, it has a long history, dating back to more than 2,000 years ago. The sheep grazing in the countryside of Lazio and Sardinia produced the milk from which this cheese was initially made and was greatly appreciated by the ancient Romans. In the imperial palaces, it was a prized dressing at banquets, while its long-term storage capacity made it a staple food for rations when the Roman legions marched. It was so much in use among the Romans that a daily ration was established to be given to the legionnaires as a supplement to their bread and farro soup. This cheese gave back strength and vigor to tired soldiers. This is because not only is this cheese extremely easy to digest, but it also contains many nutrients. So if you're ever feeling low, grab yourself a pecorino and you'll feel better in no time. Pecorino semifresco. Gouda cheese. Gouda! Gouda cheese dates back to 1184, making it one of the oldest recorded cheeses in the history of the world. This relatively mild cheese has plenty of variations because it's made across plenty of regions. Gouda is named after a city in Nord Holland, but it didn't actually originate there. Gouda? The real reason it's named after the city is that it was one of the few places in the country where cheese producers and merchants could exchange goods during the Middle Ages and Renaissance. Nowadays, Gouda is the most common type of Dutch cheese due to the city's synonymy with the dairy trade. During the warmer months, local traders still travel to Gouda to sell their cheese and often do so dressed up in traditional clothes that hark back to the city's heyday. While Gouda is traditionally made from unpasteurized cow's milk and coated in yellow wax to prevent it from drying out, it's now produced on an industrial scale. This means that the cheese is now more likely to be made from pasteurized milk as it's spoils at a much slower rate. Nonetheless, over 300 farms around the Netherlands still make Gouda the old-fashioned way, so if you ever want some really traditional Gouda, know that there are plenty of options. Get me my Gouda. Cheddar cheese. Cheddar! When you think of cheese, your first thought is probably of cheddar. In fact, according to the International Dairy Foods Association, cheddar is one of the most popular cheeses in America, period. In 2011 alone, cheddar accounted for a whopping 36% of the cheese sold in the U.S., the most concentrated amount of any one type. 
Cheddar cheese was developed in the village of Cheddar in Somerset, England during the 12th century. It immediately became popular, making appearances in the dining rooms of English nobles and many royal banquets. In fact, according to the British Cheese Board, King Henry II purchased more than 10,000 pounds of the cheese in 1107 and declared it to be the best in Britain. Now that's some serious cheese dedication. Bring the cheddar, big. Cheddar. Since 1857, the cheese has been made by a process called cheddaring, in which pieces of curd are stacked atop one another and pressed to remove the whey. Cheddaring was a revolutionary process created by Joseph Harding that suppressed the growth of microorganisms that caused bacteria. The cheese is then aged from anywhere from 3 months to 18 months or more. Cheese experts believe that cheddar is best when it's between 5 and 6 years old. But let's be real everyday people aren't going to be buying cheese that old. Whether it's mild, medium, or sharp, you can be sure that cheddar will always be there to make your dishes more delicious. You're my cheddar cheese girl, you soft but firm, and you go well with wine. Camembert cheese. Camembert. Oh, we do have some camembert. You do. Excellent. While cheddar cheese rules America, camembert rules France. This soft, creamy, and light cheese has mysterious origins because it's impossible to figure out where it came from. But we do know that its rise in popularity can be traced to the late 18th century in northern France in the region of Camembert, Normandy. The first recorded account of Camembert cheese goes back to 1791 from a farmer by the name of Marie Harel. But it's shown in her records that she heard about the recipe from a priest who came from Brie, who got the recipe from who knows where. I heard he thought camembert was goat cheese. Over the course of a hundred years, camembert cheese slowly began attracting more attention due to its great taste and colorful rind. By the 19th century, industrial processing had been developed, which meant that other parts of the world now had access to this excellent cheese. And the rest is history. Mmm, camembert. Blue cheese. So blue! This particular cheese is definitely not for everyone. Some will claim that it's the best cheese ever, while others will refuse to even get close to the stuff. It's a question of preferences, really. Blue cheese is the general term for aged cheeses that have been injected with special cultures of penicillium mold, which creates blue and emerald or even gray and brownish veins or spots throughout the cheese interior. This cheese has an extremely distinctive aroma and a tangy taste, but that distinctive aroma sometimes works against it. Blue cheese is notorious for being super smelly, and while many people turn their noses away at it, it's still well-loved among the general populace. Blue cheeses make great additions to various appetizers and make the most fabulous chicken wings dressing. And some blue cheese dressing. As blue cheeses have pretty strong and salty flavors, they could also be served with sweeter desserts or sparkling wines. On the other hand, they are versatile and shine well with beef, poultry, and fish, making them a great addition to any meal. Blue cheese! Brie cheese. Brie? <laughs> Yeah, the brie. Last but certainly not least, this soft, gooey cheese screams elegance, decadence, and other things that end with ents. Apparently, it was in the 8th century that French Emperor Charlemagne first tasted this soft cheese at a monastery in Royan Brie and fell instantly in love with its creamy, rich flavor. While we can't confirm this for sure, we do know that brie originated near Paris, where unpasteurized farm produced brie de mot and brie. Brie de melon are the most highly esteemed versions. However, most brie today is made in factories from pasteurized milk, which prolongs the life of the cheese but weakens its flavor. Brie is now widely imitated in many cheese producing countries, meaning that it's very easy to find knockoffs, but not so easy to find the real deal. I want real things. But don't worry, there are plenty of ways to find a legitimate version of this cheese. You just need to do some digging. Ultimately, whether it's served with simple fruit or in a classic fondue, the rich and fruity flavor of brie cheese helps to elevate whatever you're eating. Say brie. brie! Brie! Bite into more great videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. <laughs>